If you're anything like me, you're a pretty big fan of physics. And since you clicked on this video, I'll also assume you know who Kirby is. For those of you who haven't consumed a singular minute of digital content in the past 20 years, Kirby is a pink spherical creature with a large gaping mouth capable of sucking up anything from the smallest enemies to entire fucking galaxies. Most people know who Kirby is, but they might not know just how powerful this tiny motherfucker is. He can suck stuff up, morph into any form he wants, survive blistering colds and steaming heats, manipulate time and space, and so much more. Someone clearly didn't pay attention in physics class. We always learn that absolutely nobody evades the strict laws of physics. But Kirby seems to be an exception to that whole idea. He doesn't give a shit about laws, whether it's paying taxes or those in physics. But just what laws of physics does Kirby break and how? Let's dive in. The first thing you learn in any Kirby game, apart from moving and jumping, is the ability to suck. That alone doesn't cause problems. We humans are also perfectly capable of sucking a wide array of things. Um, the problem arises when we look into how much he sucks up. Kirby sucks up small things and also huge things, but he also never runs out of sucking capacity. First off, how does Kirby inhale things that are twice or more his size? The nerds among you might immediately shout, Pressure! You're right, pressure, just like heat, is a way to change an object's density. In this case, the mass would remain constant due to the conservation of mass, but the volume might change. Theoretically, an object's highest density is reached at the lowest possible temperature, which would be 0 Kelvin or minus 273 degrees Celsius. But there is no way Kirby has a refrigerator inside of his mouth capable of shrinking objects in that way. Similarly, it's highly unlikely he has some sort of hydraulic press in there. A final argument against this breaking a physics law could be that Kirby's body is just extremely elastic and can stretch to fit the size of any object. Well, we'll get into that later in the video. Besides the size issue, there's also the question of infinity. Where do inhaled items go when Kirby's finished nibbling on them? He obviously doesn't store them in his physical body, because he can keep doing this forever. The stuff seems to magically disappear, but we won't accept that pure disappearance. This violates the conservation of mass and energy. A popular solution is to assume that Kirby has his own little pocket dimension, a pocket of space to dump anything he inhales into. Now, it is obviously not ideal to put a small dimension into his body, and this also wouldn't solve the capacity issue. Instead, we need something in Kirby's mouth to teleport inhaled items to his pocket dimension. And that's where wormholes enter the stage. Wormholes are theoretical ways in which two points in space-time could be connected, by quite literally folding the fabric of space, like so, and creating a hole that connects them. This creates a flood of new questions. First off, how is this created? Well, creating a wormhole is tough, and most likely impossible. So it's way too complicated to get into, but it might involve merging black holes or even white holes. The next issue is that a wormhole generally doesn't want to stay open for that long. Wormholes are only stable at the Planck scale, meaning our little teleporter would need to be about 1.61 times 10 to the power of negative 35 meters in diameter. This traversable wormhole is still incredibly unstable though, and constantly wants to kill itself due to the force of gravity. To keep it open, we need to counteract that gravity. Putting normal matter in there to, I don't know, plug the hole won't work. Normal matter attracts other matter, since gravity is a thing, so this will just aid gravity in closing the wormhole. What we need is matter that pushes other matter away. This is where exotic matter becomes important. Exotic matter is matter with a negative mass. This causes wonky results in many famous equations. In Newton's second law, F equals ma, exotic matter would now accelerate in the opposite direction of applied force, because m is negative. In the gravitational force equation, the same would happen. It would push other matter away, and as a negative force, it would counteract normal gravity. The closing of the hole is thus temporarily stopped. The next problem is that this wormhole, being a significant bend in spacetime, would cause immense pressure and temperature increases in Kirby's mouth. The poor fucker's mouth would be scorching hot, and anything in there would most likely burn to ashes before reaching the pocket dimension. But let's assume Kirby also somehow survives this. I mean, he can survive burns in the game, right? Then we reach a final issue, the pressure difference between two dimensions. The first dimension is just the world that Kirby is in, containing one end of the wormhole. The second dimension is Kirby's pocket dimension, his item storage. 
There's clearly a significant pressure difference here. The normal world has a much higher pressure, while an empty pocket dimension would be freezing cold and at a very low pressure. Since air moves from high to low pressure, the same concept that causes wind to exist, this would mean the wormhole end in Kirby's world would have a very strong pulling force. Maybe this explains why Kirby has such a strong sucking power, because the pressure difference aids him, but you can't keep making stuff up. To conclude, this method of sucking is very much impossible. Yes, we have proven a theoretical idea with wormholes that might work, but we took many shortcuts and assumed the perfect conditions. In reality, something like this would end the universe quicker than any galactic boss Kirby's ever faced. Bye. Another thing Kirby is known for is his ability to float indefinitely and infinitely high. The only thing stopping Kirby from flying to the edge of the observable universe is an invisible barrier in the game. But ignoring that, this is a pretty wild mechanic that defies loads of physics laws. First off, this is a clear violation of the law of conservation of energy. It of course states that the amount of energy present in the universe is constant and that you can't create or remove energy. So Kirby uses some of his energy to puff himself up like this, but since he can do this forever, it'd mean Kirby has some kind of infinite energy capacity. He never runs out of energy, which is obviously impossible. Second is the concept of weight negation. So far we haven't actually discussed how Kirby can float up in the air. Pushing himself off the ground isn't an option, since he can float up while he's already in the air. Look at it this way. When Kirby is in the air, the main force acting upon him is the force of gravity. This will pull him back down to the ground. So we need some kind of force to counteract that. Since Kirby has nothing to push off, there's only one other option. When you fill a balloon with helium and let it go, it will float up, because helium is less dense than air. This causes the buoyancy force to exceed gravity, pushing the balloon up instead of down. You can compare this concept with things either floating or sinking in a pool filled with water. If you have a plastic boat with a density larger than water, it will sink. And if the density of your boat is smaller than water, the boat will float. The same thing goes for air. So somehow Kirby is managing to make himself less dense than air at will. This is completely impossible for several reasons. One might say the air in Kirby's world is filled with helium, allowing him to just suck it up to float. But this is incredibly wrong, since there would be no more air, and this would be pointless. You need something even less dense than helium to float up in such a world. It might just be that Kirby has a mechanism inside of him to create a gas like helium at will, but this of course just requires energy and an infinite storage of helium and it's just a mess. For Kirby's density to decrease below that of air, he might somehow want to alter his mass or his volume. Since Kirby doesn't become huge or tiny when floating, he just puffs up, it'd have to be an alteration of mass, but this of course breaks the conservation of mass. A final thing to note about infinite floating is how easily controllable Kirby is while doing this. He seemingly faces no problem when rotating and moving around in every direction when floating. This would once again only be possible if Kirby had some way of opposing any physical force at will, which we've already proven is impossible. Bye. Kirby's a stretchy guy. Nobody knows what alien material the lad's made of, but I think every manufacturer would want to get their hands on it. Why exactly? Well. Well, let's take a look at what Kirby can do to his body in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. In this game, he can wrap his body around everyday objects, from small light bulbs to gigantic trucks, spoilers, while in the latter example, Kirby is visibly struggling to wrap his entire body around it. This still implies his body has a somewhat infinite elasticity and resilience. Elasticity is the ability for an object to deform when a high pressure or force is applied, and then return to its original form when the force is removed. But not all objects are infinitely resilient to forces deforming them. Most will shatter, break or snap when the pressure becomes too large. Kirby doesn't seem to have this problem. It's a stretch, pun intended, to call his elasticity infinite though. We've seen him stretching around entire trucks, but that, that's not as infinite as it is just a pretty large number. But still, an elasticity this large has and will never exist in real life. Another thing to think about here is shape memory. Ah oh yes, memory foam, everyone's favorite satisfying concept in physics. Your pillow might have it and it might remember the shape of your head to better comfort you at night. Shape memory is also crucial for Kirby, since his body somehow has to remember what he originally looked like. 
After he's done cruising around as a truck, Kirby is able to simply morph back into his original small blob form. A perfect shape memory is impossible at that scale. Hey! Some of you have probably been waiting for this one. Kirby's infamous copy abilities. He can suck up a sword fighter and become a sword fighter himself. It doesn't take a genius to see that this is utter fictional bullshit. To begin, Kirby's transformation is nearly instant. He instantly changes his look, outfit and modifies his skill set to gain new abilities. He often also creates weapons out of thin air, like swords or wands. For the outfits and weapons, it is possible that Kirby is actually taking them from the sucked up enemies, but that'd be pretty hard. If our previous assumptions are correct, the enemy would arrive in Kirby's pocket dimension when swallowed. So Kirby would need a mechanism to detect when an enemy is swallowed and if so, somehow grab their clothing and weapons from inside his mouth to equip himself. In game this would look like Kirby is vomiting out tunics and swords. Kirby's insane speed for this can just be attributed to the fact that he's an epic mastermind. But this terribly wrong scenario runs into another issue. How does Kirby instantly learn how to use a sword, cast a spell, cast a supernova? How does he gain immediate access to information about an inhaled enemy like that? It's not like every enemy in Kirby's world has an instruction booklet on them at all times, informing Kirby of how to do what they do. And if they did, Kirby would have to be able to read and understand it all in a matter of milliseconds. Since that's not viable, Kirby would have to be able to read an enemy's brain, or worse, copy it to be able to perform their set of moves perfectly. Does Kirby possess brain scanning technology within his mouth? I don't think so. Finally, we can't forget copy abilities with beams or lasers. Many of these abilities have a clear relation to electricity, and Kirby is thus able to create bolts of electricity at will and infinitely. This is impossible and violates the conservation of energy. Uh, do I even have to explain this one? A somehow floating star somehow flies at supersonic speeds to somehow any location in the universe? Yeah, no. <laughs> Throughout the years, we've seen Kirby in all sorts of extreme situations. He's found himself in the freezing arctic, but also in the blistering heat of a desert or the inside of a volcano. Normally, a creature has an optimal set of living conditions for temperature, humidity, light exposure and all that. But Kirby's natural habitat is anything everywhere. <laughs> if you were to stand in a room with a temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius and then instantaneously move to a room where it's 40 degrees Celsius, so a 70 degree increase, you would most likely pass out and maybe die. Kirby does not give a shit. The only time he actually suffers is when he jumps into real lava. Since lava has an average heat of 1250 degrees Celsius, let's call that his upper limit. In the scenario that Kirby does hurt himself, by touching lava, being bitten by an enemy, or being stabbed by an intergalactic knight named after an evil tech company, he can heal himself without a problem. Don't get me wrong here, Kirby is almost never able to fully heal by himself, because he often needs food to drop from enemies or found on the ground, but still, this sort of regeneration is completely bonkers. You would expect the guy to be full of scars and blisters, but his body remains as smooth as ever. Kirby is a pretty buff guy, not as buff as King Dedede in Star Allies, but he can output some insane strength. There's not much to go over here, things like sucking shit up, healing infinitely, floating infinitely, using copy abilities and all that stuff already indicate a super strength. However, it's difficult to label this as breaking the laws of physics or any other science since we don't know Kirby as a species and his capabilities. He might just go to the gym often. In a few Kirby games, for example Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Kirby has the ability to slow down or outright stop the process of time. While obviously not possible, let's for experimental reasons delve into some complicated physics behind how it theoretically could be done. Warning, these are pretty far-fetched. A first idea is abusing Einstein's theory of general relativity. In it, space-time is the fourth dimension, a plane warped by mass and thus gravity. A very massive object, like a black hole, stretches space-time to an extreme, causing time to come to a halt beyond its event horizon. So in this case, Kirby would either just have control over space-time and be able to bend it, or he'd be able to create supermassive objects to slow down time without that massive object influencing anything else in the world, somehow. The second idea is to work with entropy. Entropy can be used as an arrow of time, a way to distinguish the past from the future without a doubt. 
This is because the second law of thermodynamics states that entropy can only increase with time, not decrease. So while this is horrifically theoretical, if Kirby was able to control entropy and somehow decrease it, time might be reversed or frozen. Keep in mind that modifying entropy would mean having complete control over almost every particle in the universe. The final ideas are completely off the charts in terms of theorizing. In quantum mechanics, time is a parameter and not a dynamic entity. This means that control over the quantum time state might allow Kirby to slow down time. There is also quantum entanglement, where two particles have entangled properties even if they are light years away from each other. Some theories propose that manipulating this could allow time manipulation. And with that, I think I've made it pretty clear just how many fines Kirby would be getting from the physics police if such a thing existed. I can't believe I have to say this, but this video is purely for fun and educational purposes. Obviously Kirby is a fictional video game character and anything unrealistic he can do is just freedom that games have, but we're here to throw physics in it anyways. Primarily to have fun and also to learn real physics in a unique and interesting way. That being said, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and don't forget to stay safe.